Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this session, we'll be looking at how artificial neural networks train themselves and thereby become one of the most widely used machine learning algorithms out there, solving a wide variety of problems. Now you might wonder why I would make a video on this topic. Well, first of all, because artificial neural networks are fascinating. And second of all, because the process how they train themselves is a very nice application of partial derivatives. Therefore, if you know how to calculate partial derivatives and you understand what they actually mean, you will be able to understand how neural networks train themselves. And to do this, we will in this video focus on a very basic neural network. Because if you fundamentally understand how it trains itself, you will be able to understand more complex neural networks. And with this intro out of the way, let's get into it. Let's start by formulating the basic problem that we're trying to solve by training a neural network. Let's say that as an input, we have two numbers. Let's call them x1 and x2. And these two numbers can be any two numbers you like. And we use these two numbers as input in order to get one single number as an output. Let's call this y. However, in between, we don't exactly know how this y is obtained from this input to numbers. What we do know, however, is a series of examples. For example, we have 1, 1 as our two inputs, and from this we get the output 2. Likewise, we have the input minus 2 and 3, and this gives us the output 1. And we have one more example with the input 0, 2, which gives us an output 2. Now, even though we have these three examples of inputs relating to outputs, we still don't know this basic relation right here. We only have these examples. And the problem that we're now going to solve using a neural network is if we have a new input, for example, 2, 8. How will we get an output of this 2, 8, given only the information that we have from these three examples? And in this particular video, we'll be looking at the case where we only have one example. Let's say that we only have an input 1, 1, which gives an output 2. How will we use this information together with a neural network in order to find the output for the new input 2, 8? And the goal is to train a neural network such that any input that we give, it will give a right output that is in accordance to this example. It is exactly in this way that neural networks need training data, examples of input and output, and then using these examples in the training algorithm that we will look at in this video to be able to give us the output for any new input numbers. And this is what we'll look at right now, step by step. Let's first look at the schematic representation of the neural network that will be able to solve this problem and afterwards look at each step which brings us from the input to the output. The input nodes are always drawn on the left-hand side of the neural network, and they will represent the x1 and x2 that we needed as our input for our function that we are looking for. These two inputs are then connected to a node where we sum both of them. However, before we take the sum of them, we first multiply each input with a specific number, and this number, w1 and w2, will be called the weights of this connection. They correspond to this specific connection of x1 to this sum and x2 to this sum. After the inputs are weighted and then summed together, they are sent to a function. And this function basically takes this weighted sum and outputs a single number. The use of this function is oftentimes to limit the range of what this sum can be, for example, between minus one and one. So it would take a number, for example, 100, and reduce it to a number between minus one and one. And then afterwards, when this function is taken, we will get the end node, the output node. And this one we will call y tilde. And the reason for this notation y tilde will become very apparent when we're looking at the training algorithm. And this is exactly the schematic representation of our very simple neural network with two input nodes, input node one and input node two, and one output node. And this of course corresponds to the case where we have two input numbers, 
in our example it was 1 1 and it gives us an output number 2 and to get from this input to this specific output we of course go through the neural network in the following steps. The first step, like I said, was to multiply each input node with its respective weight. And the weights are represented by W1 and W2. In the second step, those two terms are added. So we have X1 multiplied by W1, and we add this with X2 multiplied by W2. And this is exactly what happens in this step. Then the third step is that we take the output of this sum and we put it inside of a function. So we have the function of x1 multiplied by w1 plus x2 multiplied by w2. And what exactly this function is depends on the application that you're using. Often used functions are either the tangent hyperbolic, which sends the input through a number from minus one to plus one, it could also be the sigmoid function, which sends the number from 0 to 1, or it could be something entirely else, for example, the linear function, which we will be using in our case. And this function basically sends the input to the output again. And then the fourth step is to call the output y tilde, which is effectively the function of the weighted sum of our inputs. And this will be the most important quantity when looking at the neural network. And we see that it depends on two quantities. One quantity is the input, which is basically fixed for a fixed input. And the other quantity are these weights. And it will be these weights that will determine how well this neural network performs. Because it is these weights that determine the output of our neural network for a specific input. So let's now turn to the crux of this video, which is how the neural network learns, which is of course often referred to as the training of the neural network. And let's now dive into detail how this works. The first thing is to again realize what we know. We have one pair of x1 and x2, of which we already know the output. And we know that the output is y. And this is fixed. We know that this is the ground truth, that x1 and x2 give an output y. Now we also just saw that the neural network also takes in this input and outputs the number y tilde, which is in general a function of x1 multiplied by the weight w1 plus the second input x2 multiplied by the second weight w2. And this in general will of course not be equal to the real y for a given x1 and x2. This will of course only be the case for a very specific w1 and w2. So again, it's the w's that determine the output of our neural network, which in general is not equal to the real output of our input. Because the output of our neural network and the real output for a specific input are not equal to each other, we can define an error. And this error is basically defined as the square of the difference between the real output and the output of the neural network. And the goal of the training procedure is of course to minimize this error E. And how do we minimize E? Well, of course, it's by finding the best weights for our neural network, such that Y tilde, the output of our neural network, is as close as possible to the real Y for a specific input. And at this point, you of course already realize that here the derivatives come into play, because E is a function of y tilde, and y tilde is a function of these weights. So therefore, in an indirect way, E is a function of w1 and w2, the weights of our neural network. And let's see what exactly this function is. So E is equal to our real y minus our output of our neural network, y tilde. Now, y tilde, we of course know, is this expression which we can just write out. So we have y minus this function of x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2, our weighted sum. And we have to square the difference between the two. So we indeed see that e is a function of w1 and w2. And of course, x1 and x2 are our fixed input training data. And y is our fixed output data. So we see that the only variables here are w1 and w2. 
And now you can see that if we want to minimize e, we have to take the partial derivative of this entire function to both of these weights, w1 and w2. So let's do that right away. So the first partial derivative is the partial derivative of our error to our first weight, w1. And this, of course, will be the partial derivative to w1 of our function right here. So we have y minus f of x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2. And we have to square this entire thing. Computing this partial derivative means that we have to use the chain rule because we see that we are deriving to this w1, but this w1 is firstly enclosed in this function f, and then this f itself is enclosed in this square right here. So, of course, we have to use the chain rule. The first step is to derive this square. So we get 2 times y minus f of x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2, which is deriving this square. And the chain rule says that we then multiply this with minus the partial derivative of this function to w1. And because at this point, this function is not yet defined, however, we will define it when we're looking at a very concrete example later on, we leave it like this for now. The second partial derivative is to take the partial derivative of our error to our second weight, w2. This is, of course, again, equal to the partial derivative to w2 of this same error function. So the real y minus our function of our weighted sum, x1 multiplied with w1 plus x2 multiplied with w2. And we have to square this in order to get the error. Here, we again see that we have to use the chain rule because we're deriving to w2 and w2 is enclosed in this f and in this square right here. So we basically get a very similar result. First, we derive this square. So we get 2 times y minus f of our weighted sum, x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2, multiplied by minus the partial derivative of f, and this time to w2, our second weight. And what we see here is that we can rewrite this even further because this term here, this f, is of course equal to y tilde, the output of our neural network. So we see that the partial derivative of our error to our first weight is equal to 2 times our real output, so our training output, minus the output of our neural network, multiplied with minus the partial derivative of our function to our first weight w1. And we see that the other partial derivative will be the partial derivative of our error to our second weight, which is equal to two times, again, our real output minus the output of our neural network, multiplied with minus the partial derivative to our second weight. And these are basically important quantities to know, because what these partial derivatives basically say is how our error, which was a function of our two weights, how does this error change when we change these weights? Because we want to minimize our error and therefore we have to adapt our weights. And this now concretely says how our error depends on our weights. And we can use this directly to define how our new weights will look like. Let's denote our new first weight to be w1 new. This will simply be w1 old, so the weight that we had before minus some learning rate, this can be any number, but most of the time it's a very small number, times exactly how this error depends on our first weight. And likewise, the rule to update the second weight is that the new second weight is simply the old second weight minus this learning rate times how this error depends on the second weight. And these are now exactly the update formulas for our weights in order to optimize our neural network in order that its output, y tilde, is as close as it's possible to our real output, y. This entire calculation defines for us a loop or an algorithm that goes as follows. The first step of the loop is to get initial weights, which are 
W1 and W2 in our case. This means just picking some random values for these weights. The second step is to use these weights to calculate an output of our neural network. Y tilde is equal to this function of the first input multiplied by the first weight plus the second input multiplied by the second weight. And this is the output of the neural network when we use our initial weights. The third step is to compare. We have to compare the output of our neural network, y tilde, with the real output given for this input x1, x2, meaning y. And what we mean with this comparison is of course to compute this error of y minus y tilde squared. And then the fourth step of course is to calculate these partial derivatives to update our weights according to the schema that we had here. So we have to first compute these partial derivatives and then we can update to get the new weights. And once we have our new weights w1 prime and w2 prime for example and having these new weights we can go back to step two and repeat the process. So we can use these new weights here to calculate a new output of our network and then we compare this new output to the real output. We use this error to again update our weights and we can start all over again. And it is this loop that will be iterated thousands and thousands of times just to get the output of our neural network to be very close to the real output for this specific training set. And at one point our weights w1 and w2 will be the final weights because at this point our output of our network will be very close to the real output for this specific training sample. And at this point, these new weights will define a neural network that will be able to process new input and output, hopefully the right result. Now, if this all sounds very abstract to you, don't worry, because we'll be looking at an example to make this all more clear. So in this example, like I said in the start, we use one training sample. We know that the input one, one will always give the output two. What we further need to specify is that this function that we will use will simply be the linear function. So f of x is equal to x. It simply returns the input. So let's then go to step one, which will be the initial weights. Let's take random numbers. So w1 is equal to one and w2 is equal to 0 0.5, so one half. And the second step is to compute the output of our neural network using these initial weights. We know that the output y tilde is equal to this function of our weighted sum. So x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2. And at this point we know all of these numbers. So we simply have f of x1 is equal to one multiplied by w1 is also equal to one plus x2 is also one and w2 is 0 0.5. This will simply be the function of 1.5 and the function of 1.5 is simply 1.5 because our function simply returns the input. In the third step of our algorithm we compare this output of our network with the real output. So we know that the error will be equal to the square of the difference of the real output with the computed network output. This will simply be 2 because the real output of 1 1 will be 2 and we subtract from this 1.5 and we square this. Now we know that this will be 0 0.5 squared or 0 0.25. So this will be the error of our neural network using these initial weights. Then the fourth step is to compute the partial derivatives. We know that the partial derivative of this error to the first weight, w1, is equal to two times y minus y tilde multiplied with the negative partial derivative of this f to w1. Now, because we know that f of x is simply x, and we know that the input that we put inside of this function is x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2, we know that the partial derivative of this function to w1, meaning this one, will simply be the factor in front of it, therefore x1. So we know that this simply becomes 2 times 2 minus 
which is simply y minus y tilde, multiplied with minus the derivative of f to w1 is simply x1, and x1 is simply 1. So we multiply this with minus 1. And therefore, we get as a first derivative minus 1. And this will be a number that we will be using in the next step. The same can be done for the partial derivative of our error to our second weight w2. We can get 2 multiplied with y minus y prime, so the real output, which is 2, minus the calculated output, which is 1.5, which we calculated right here, multiplied with minus the partial derivative of our function to our second weight now. And because we know that our function returns its input, that its input is a weighted sum, and that w2 has a coefficient of x2 in front of it. So we know that this one will simply be minus x2. So we get for this one also minus 1. And we already have our second result. Let's now use these two partial derivatives to update our weights. So we know that the new weights, so w1 new and w2 new, are equal to the following, which we looked at before. It's simply the old weight, so w1 old and w2 old. And now we have these terms which actually update the weights. So we have our learning rate, which in this case we will choose to be 0 0.2, a very small number. However, in practice, this is even smaller. And we multiply this with the partial derivatives that we just calculated. And we calculate this to be our old first weight was simply 1. And our second old weight was simply 0 0.5. Then we subtract from these numbers our learning rate, which is 0 0.2 in both cases, multiplied with these partial derivatives. And in both cases, these were minus 1. So what do we get for our new weights? We get 1 minus negative 0 0.2. So that's 1 plus 0 0.2, which is 1.2. And for our second weight, we get 0 0.5 minus negative 0 0.2, which is of course 0 0.5 plus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.7. And these are effectively our new weights, which define a new neural network. And as a last step, let's see if we indeed got closer to a neural network that predicts the right result. Let's now go to the second step again, where we calculate the output of our new neural network. So we have y tilde is equal to our function of x1 times now our new weight plus x2 times our new second weight. This simply will be f of the following, 1 times 1.2 plus 1 times 0 0.7, because our x1 and x2 are still 1, 1. This was our training sample. And our new weights are now 1.2 and 0 0.7. And we know our function simply returns the input, so we get 1.2 plus 0 0.7, which is of course 1.9. And this is much closer than we previously got. Our previous neural network outputted 1.5. Now this outputs 1.9. So let's look at the error in this case. The error is equal to, again, our real y minus the output of our network squared, which is equal to 2 the real output, minus 1.9 squared, which is of course 0 0.1 squared, which is 0 0.01. And this is indeed much, much smaller than the 0 0.25 we had for our previous network. So we now, after one step already, updated our network in such a way that for our training sample, the output is much, much closer. And this brings us to the end of this video. And I hope that you're now more aware of how neural networks actually train. If you learned something, give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you really enjoyed it, you can always consider subscribing. And with that, I thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.